To understand this section, it's important that you distinguish between a movement along the demand curve, indicating a change in the quantity demanded, and a shift in the demand curve, which is caused by a change in other non-price factors, and is referred to as a change in demand. Let's look at substitutes first by assuming that households regard fried chicken pieces and chicken burgers as substitutes. Diagram A shows the demand for fried chicken, and in diagram B, the demand for chicken burgers. What would happen in diagram B if chicken burgers went on sale and the price decreased from, say, 12 rand to 9 rand? According to the law of demand, a drop in the price of chicken burgers will cause an increase in the quantity demanded, say from 16 to 20, resulting in a movement along the market demand curve for chicken burgers. And since chicken burgers and fried chicken pieces are substitutes, households will tend to buy chicken burgers in the place of fried chicken pieces. If you used to eat fried chicken pieces every Wednesday night, a new sale on chicken burgers might cause you to switch from fried chicken to chicken burgers. So households now buy less fried chicken at each price and the demand curve shifts to the left. Overall, the demand for fried chicken falls. At a price of 7 rand, the quantity demanded drops from 12 to 8, and at a price of 2 rand it drops from 42 to 38, all because households have switched to chicken burgers. So, a change in the price of one substitute causes a change in overall demand of another substitute. A movement along the demand curve of one substitute causes a shift in the demand curve for the other substitute.